One of the advantages of having the State of the Hive podcast released on my channel is I can make a video like this giving my unadulterated opinion uninterrupted. So if you'll indulge me for this video, I will go through all of the positives of uh, the Hive Mapper project, what's been done up until now, what's in the works for this year, and also look in a little bit of price speculation, what is the bull case for the Honey Token as well. Now, one of the reasons that I'm doing this video um, is I think it's super important because a lot of you have been giving feedback about the state of the Hive podcast, that it's taken a bit of a negative turn. And I, to be honest, I totally agree with you. We've been focusing too much on the negatives and not doing a good enough job of putting all the positive things in light because Hive Mapper, as we all know, is an incredible project. And I don't want to focus purely on the negatives. I definitely want to look at some of the positive things that um, have happened and are to come as well. So that's what this video is about. At the same time, I would also say that everyone involved in the State of the Hive podcast that you might have seen is super passionate about the Hive Mapper project. And I think that's why sometimes uh, emotions can get a little bit high. Um, one guy springs to mind in particular who sometimes takes more of a negative spin, but I know that everybody there is super passionate about the project. So keep that in mind when you're watching us as well. But anyway, let's get into the positives and the bull case scenario for Hive Mapper this year and beyond. So first of all, let's look what's been achieved numbers wise in terms of mapping, right? So as a community, so far, we've mapped nearly 8 million unique kilometers of road and nearly 122 million kilometers in total. Now, just pause and think about that for a second. It is incredible. It's ridiculous. That is so much mapping that we've done, so many road kilometers. And that equates to about 10% of all of the world's roads. We've managed to do this quicker than anybody else has even come close to doing in the past. And also bear in mind that this is just the start. We've been going for just over a year. Uh, there's obviously a lot more to do to get close to that 100% of overall uh, road kilometers in the world mapped, but I'm confident we can get there over time because we've achieved so much so far. And that in itself is super, super bullish and it's definitely not worth um, understating the importance of that and the progress that we've made. That's down by and large to the Hive Mapper team doing an incredible job. And then also the community uh, doing a great job mapping as well. So heading very much in the right direction. I touched on the Hype Mapper team there. I think that that's another huge asset that we can't downplay. So far, they've delivered on all their key promises. So they've, they've set realistic expectations in terms of uh, fulfillment of dash cams. Um, we can see in some other deep in projects in the past, that's not always been the case, but I think Hype Mapper have been very, very sensible about setting realistic expectations when it comes to delivery dates. And then just the speed at which they've moved on many key milestones, such as getting better uh, software out there for the app, for the firmware, has also been really impressive to see. I'm not saying there aren't still bugs that need to be flattened out. It's impossible to deploy a project of this scale and ambition without having a load of hiccups on the way. And there certainly have been hiccups, but that's to be expected. You can't get too upset when mistakes are made and when sort of uh, bugs appear. It's inevitable with a project like this. And I think they're doing a great job at moving very, very quickly in the areas that matter. And we've also got a new bit of hardware, a new dash cam coming out, hopefully very, very soon to look forward to. Um, and because and we are still so early in the project, imagine what we can do going forward with even better tech. Now, the other thing that makes me so bullish on Hive Mapper is the team's relentless focus on getting clients. Sometimes at the expense of other things like the community may say, okay, you need to focus on ABC. And sometimes the attitude has kind of been, well, yes, we know that, this is from the high back team, we know that, but it's not number one priority right now. They're very open about saying whether things are number one priority or not. And as far as I can tell, number one priority has uh, and continues to be getting clients on board and getting revenue in. That's how you make a sustainable project. I've actually myself spoken about that um, a lot on the State of the, High, uh, State of the High podcast, and I think that that is super, super bullish as well. Demonstrated further by the fact they've just appointed a chief revenues officer as well. Um, they take this properly seriously, and they already have clients. We don't know a ton about the clients because I guess there's some data protection going on there. They have to look out for the interests of the clients and their privacy, but we know that they do have clients. Um, at such an early stage, I think that that's super bullish as well. And there are also so many use cases and so many scenarios, customers that would be willing to pay for this kind of data. Uh, that's a whole nother video's worth that we will go through in the future, but yeah, the future looks super bright in that respect. Right, let's talk about price, um, get a little bit more speculative. And I wanna go down the bullish route, the kind of best case scenario for Honey Price moving forwards and say that's, let's say the next sort of 12 months to, I don't know, two or three years. So 
It's very widely believed at the moment that we're on the precipice, if not kind of already entered the first stage of a bull cycle in crypto. Anybody who was around for the, the most recent bull cycle or even once before that, know the importance of narratives. And now Deepin is turning into a very significant narrative. Some of the comments in the State of the Hive videos have been absolutely spot on. Totally agree with you guys who put, brought it up. Deepin as a narrative, that can't also be understated of how important it could be for positive price action going into the bull market. In a bull cycle, there'll be a lot of new retail money coming in. And then there'll also be guys who've been around for a long time, either rotating their higher market cap assets like ETH and Bitcoin into more risky, higher potential tokens like the lower market cap stuff like Honey, or people who have been sitting on stable coins if they cashed out during a previous cycle, looking to deploy into high potential stuff. And again, this narrative of Deepin and Hive Map is standing out as one of the best, if not the best project within Deepin, I think is super bullish as well. Now, we can also back this up with some fundamentals as well, just on a really basic math level, right? Let's look at Helium, one of the most kind of similar, I guess, projects you can, you can relate um, a lot of other deep end projects to. At the height of the last bull market, it reached over $55. If you look at the fully diluted market cap of Helium at that peak, it was around $12.3 billion. Now, right now, HiveMapper, or Honey, sorry, is sitting at around $1.6 in market cap. So a good seven and a half X to go before it's at that all time high market cap or fully diluted market cap level of helium. Now, will it hit that? I have absolutely no idea and I don't think no, neither does anybody else if we're being totally honest. But crazier things have definitely happened during a bull cycle. And that would equate to a honey token price of around $1.20. Again, is it gonna hit that? I have no idea. Could it be something in between kind of the 15 cent mark to that? I mean, totally possible. And yeah, I mean, even surpassing that is definitely not out of the out of the question. And is it possible that the fully diluted market cap of Hive Mappers Honey Token actually surpasses where Helium was in the last bull, bull cycle? Sure, that's absolutely possible as well. So again, even on the price level, if you look at the bull case scenario, there's a lot to be positive and excited about. Now, another point that we've uh, mentioned on the State of the Hive podcast, which I think ties into this in a slightly different light to what we spoke about before, is the fact that the team and the investors have a rather large allocation of the tokens, so 60% in total. Now, we've never looked at this in a positive light, but I think there is actually a positive take on this too, because that basically means that a lot of the uh, overall supply is kind of taken out of circulation artificially. And if the team and investors don't sell until many, many years down the line um, into the project, then that could artificially lower the circulating supply of honey tokens. And then as new money comes in, if there's enough buy pressure, that can push the token price up higher than if the circulating supply was larger than it is. And also guys, look, on a slightly serious, uh, more serious note, I think it's really, really important for me to point something out. So in the podcast, we mentioned the fact that, you know, Ariel and Evan are getting large allocations. I mean, they're the two guys at the very, very top of the project. It makes sense that they will get more than everybody else, but it might have been alluded to that they could potentially sell at any minute and have a negative effect on price. Of course, you know, that's possible. I have a no reason to believe that they have anything but the best uh, intentions for the project at heart. They want to make this a success and they're proving that by their actions. And B, they haven't sold a single honey token, uh, either of them. And we know this is a fact. So I didn't want anybody to mistake what we spoke about on the podcast as us saying that they have been selling um, Evan and Ariel because I know for a fact that they haven't been selling. And I just wanted to make that crystal clear so there's no confusion around it. However, at the same time, I do think it's very fair for us to have critiqued the fact that a minority of the overall community controls 60% of overall token supply. Um, although this clearly was in the documentation from day one, I still do find it quite odd and a bit of a red flag that there's no restrictions on token sales after a very, very short vesting period. But we all know that there's nothing we can do about it, so we should probably just move forwards. So clearly an absolute ton to be excited about. Um, I have, or Future Networks, we have hundreds of dash cams arriving over the next few months. So I'm so excited to get them out, um, to get them mapping and see what coverage we can uh, sort of create in the UK. And I strongly encourage other people in different countries to do the same thing. You see people in the community kind of asking, you know, are, are we too late to the party and all of this? The answer is definitely no. This is just the beginning. I'm confident that people buying a dash cam now will get a positive financial return on the dash cam. But even more importantly, 
you're joining an awesome project, which is innovative. It's at the cutting edge of technology. It's, um, you know, bustling with the likes of Google Maps, trying to break into that monopoly. And it's just a fantastic project to be a part of. Do earnings over time for deep in projects typically go down? be that because of the price going down or because of earnings per dash cam or earnings per hardware device going down. Like, yes, of course. But I still think that you'll see positive uh, financial returns, particularly with a long-term mindset. So if you're asking yourself the question, should I get involved? Should I buy a dash cam? Should I start a fleet? The answer is 100%. You might want to consider, do you want to wait until the new uh, hardware device is announced or do you want to put in an order now, which as far as I'm aware will arrive somewhere sort of um, early summer? But yeah, absolutely positive that you should do it and, and get involved with this awesome project. There's discount codes that you can find. Um, I'm not here to promote on my own or anything, but you can you know, give it a quick Google. You can get 10% off your, your hardware. Go and do it. Go and get involved and um, join this awesome community. But at this point, a quick disclaimer. Please don't go putting your life savings into dash cams just because of this video. None of this is financial advice in the slightest. Everything to do with crypto is risky. You could lose what you put in. So please only invest what you can afford to lose into HiveMap or any other crypto project. Awesome. That felt good to focus purely on the positives. You can expect more on that from this channel. Um, we will carry on. Uh, critiquing the areas that we think, I'm talking about the State of the Heart uh, High podcast, critiquing the areas that we think need critiquing, doing it in a way that is being more productive in offering potential solutions to the, the, the problems we see, I think is also important. And I'm going to try um, and get further towards that. You know, I don't want it to be a group of people getting together and moaning. I, it's going to be more like, OK, if we're focusing on something that needs improving, let's point out what needs improving and then offer a productive solution to it. So you can expect more of that in the future to come as well. And also expanding on some of the other things that I mentioned in this video, like, you know, what is the profile of uh, some of the clients that could come into this ecosystem? What are some of the other amazing assets that HiveMapper have been building, like the kind of AI machine learning capabilities? Thanks a lot for listening, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.